I like to call my work integral anatomy. Now, I could go on and on about integral anatomy, but for now, I'd like to just focus on one, one little point that I make as an integral anatomist. And it has to do with whether we're encountering a picture or a person, whether we're working with a picture or a person. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, regular anatomy, uh, we learn it in a book, and we study pictures, images, that are drawings of the body. Now, those drawings tend to be made from averages. So, the amazing Frank Netter, a famous anatomical illustrator, would look at a thousand livers before he drew a liver. Now, what liver did he drew? What, li what liver did he draw? He didn't draw any one of those thousand livers that he saw. He drew kind of an average portrait of a generic liver. You don't have that liver. Neither do I. Nobody has the liver that's the average liver. Maybe there's one person on the planet who has the average liver, but I guarantee you they don't have the average liver and the average spleen. No, they may have one thing in their body that is the average, but everything else is off of the mean, off of the average. So people are very unique in our anatomical expression, more so than you would probably imagine. Our livers are as different as our faces. I mean it. I've looked a lot of livers in the face. So when we're working with a person, when we're encountering another human being, if we're putting our hands on them to do service as a therapist, when you touch, are you in your head remembering the picture of the anatomy beneath your hands? That's nobody. But in your very presence is somebody. So the idea then, as an integral anatomist, is to encounter the anatomy that's in front of you as a first principle. The book will always be wrong relative to the person in front of you. But if we're very attached to the pictures, the images that we learn from to get the basics of anatomy, if we're very attached, we're liable to be working on the picture in our head rather than the person in front of us whose own unique individual expression of that averaged image in the textbook deserves its time and attention and acceptance and welcome and to be addressed directly rather than uh, secondarily as an accident of your working instead with an image in your head. So the encouragement would be to recognize the perfection, the uniqueness of the anatomical, of the anatomical expression directly in front of you in the human being you're encountering, rather than filtering your relationship through a set of images that actually don't represent any single person at all. Embrace the pictures as an aid to your encounter with the truth that resides in the human being in front of you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, Go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.